Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. This is coax cable. And this is all coax cable. I want you to think about this. When you're looking at coax cable, the first thing that comes to your mind should be loss. What is the loss in this cable versus one that might be a larger diameter? Um, some will say it doesn't matter. Um, I was trying to demonstrate in a video that I uploaded yesterday where I discuss a long run of coax versus a short run. The long run shows a much lower SWR uh, from the antenna. And the reason for that is losses in the coax. The reflected power basically has been being uh, changed to heat or loss in the coax. So why is that important? Why, why should you care? Um, first of all, you want to know what the SWR is at the antenna, and that's crucial. And you want that to be as um, as good as you can get it. Now, SWR is not everything that's occurring at the antenna. Um, what you want to look at is what is the resonant frequency of that antenna, and what is the impedance at that point. Um, that may be where the SWR is 2 to 1. Uh, the 1 to 1 SWR occurs somewhere else. But you need to know what is the pure resistive impedance of that antenna. I know it's not pure, but um, where there is no reactant. So what is R? What is the resistance, the impedance of that antenna? As you go one way or the other, there's going to be either capacitive or inductive reactants that will mix with that resistive value and change the impedance of the antenna. It may be at its resonant point 25 ohms but it may be 50 ohms over here or it may be 50 ohms over here. Confusing? You bet. And do you need to know this stuff? This is one of those things that you need to to figure out and it's not altogether easy. So you're looking for what is the pure resistive uh, load of that antenna with no reactants, where does that occur, and then um, how close is that to uh, my operating frequency? Maybe I need to trim the antenna a little bit or make it longer. Having said that, um, there's no pure antenna. Every antenna has issues. Uh, there's no perfect antenna. So let's talk about a couple things that came up in the video. And one of the uh, comments I made, and I, and I was being I was kidding. I was sort of sarcastic too. Let's and I, I mentioned a wingnut, and a wingnut is sort of a derogatory comment. Um, so there's a wingnut on a box, and there's a wire that goes off in the distance. And one manufacturer suggested to improve the SWR to attach a wire to that wingnut and run it down the ground. Well, that wingnut ends up becoming the other half of the antenna, or at least a portion of it. So if it had 25 feet down the ground and 100 feet going off, what would that be? It's got 100 feet and 25 feet from the feed point, and it's an off-center fed dipole. Um, is that a good antenna? Yeah, it can be a great way to accomplish a couple of different bands. Um, and the manufacturer of that box, some are honest, they tell you what's going on, others, not so much. Um, also, uh, one of the things we talked about was SWR and the impact of it. And so think about that pulse that you send out to the antenna from your transceiver. Could be just a dit, and I excuse the, the, uh, uh, my description of this because it's not exactly accurate, but you send out a dit and it travels down to the antenna. If you have hugely loss of coax, you may only deliver 50 watts out of that 100 to the antenna. And if the antenna has a high SWR, it may radiate a portion of that and send a portion back to the transceiver, which turns, turns around and comes back. So it's got a trip this way and a trip this way. So now you've, again, imposed huge losses on that, um, on that transmitted signal. Is that something that you want to do? No. Some of the stuff that I talk about is related to my background. Uh, since 1964, I have been interested in being a DXer. And so I concentrated on the antenna system. What 
Hey, what is going on here? Why do I need a large diameter coax? Why do I need an antenna with some gain? Why do I need an antenna that I can direct? Um, why is the SWR important? Um, uh, station grounding doesn't exist. RF grounding, I describe that wire connected to the box and the wing nut as an RF ground. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Um, on a uh, NFED antenna, oftentimes the coax becomes the other part of the antenna. So the shield becomes the other part and it becomes an off-center fed dipole as opposed to really truly an NFED. There are lots of manufacturers making antennas that simply don't work very well. Um, there's one that I know of that makes antennas that, that do and he's brutal, brutally honest about how his antennas work, what they do, and what they don't do. And I'm going to try to arrange that interview with a guy. Um, I'm hoping he'll agree to it. I, I'm going to make contact with him. Let's go over some of the questions that came up um, as a result of, of the video. And um, some of them are going to be um, a little bit confusing. Some folks don't quite grasp what's going on yet. Uh, let me go to this one. Okay, so let's look at some of the questions that came in and um, see what uh, what people were asking. Um, by the way, let me zoom ahead to this part. Uh, where am I? Yeah, there. Um, <laughs> I just did that for the fun of it. Um, I was playing with the uh, um, the way to do um, a screen on screen kind of a thing. So I played with the uh, black background. To make it work, I had to uh, take my face and make it really sort of black and white. All right, let's see. Um, maybe I can zoom in on these. Uh, maybe not. All right, Greasy Dot, my buddy, says, uh, Hello, Jim. Really good to see you and hear you. Thanks for another informative video. I have several books by Ed Noel, and he speaks of coax lengths and odd multiple and even multiples with a formula to match wire antennas. <clears throat> well, that's true. There are points along the coax where there it's considering the velocity factor um, might be uh, a, an, a multiple of a, a half wavelength. So it repeats what you see at the antenna without having to go to the antenna. But still there can be coax losses. Um, Sibic, who is an antenna genius, uh, he's got several antennas. Um, this guy says the one that he put up was pretty lousy on 10 meters and 12 due to many lobes and null in the pattern. It's hard to make an antenna that does it all. All right, John McAdams wrote, if you, uh, let's see, I find your topics and demonstrations interesting. And very helpful, this one specifically, uh, despite the issues I have at the end of it. Can HF band SWR be reduced and the actual power radiated by an NFED antenna be increased based on how many, uh, based on how the coax feed line to the antenna is routed, uh, positioned? I don't think so. I think uh, it is what it is. Um, we're going to talk more about uh, half-wave antennas and, and really converting it to a, uh, uh, an off-center fed dipole. Um, okay, that one says, thank you. Um, that one says, thank you. Good advice. Excellent video. All right, I have the Comet CHA250B, and I'm super impressed. Um, you wouldn't be if you had a real antenna. Enough said. Um, I don't know about the DX Commander's antennas at all. Um, there's nothing wrong with a fan dipole, so likely it works and works well. Uh, let's see. Uh... Okay, if the station has a now I, 
I was joking uh, during part of the, uh, the video where I said some things. So if the station has a lightning arrestor, I am assuming there is a corresponding ground rod. If so, what difference would the wing nut make? Well, uh, the wing nut may, in, may end up being the point at which the uh, uh, where you hook up the coax becomes the center of an off-center fed dipole, becomes off-center of the off-center fed dipole. The wing nut and coax are continuous, uh, no. Um, the purpose of the wing nut and a ground is absolutely useless. If you want to make it a an off-center fed dipole, that's a whole different story. Um, Eric D. wrote, Jim, I found uh, informative, enjoyable. When you put the SWR in your face in the middle, I was option. Oh, okay, I was absolutely uh, nothing about filming or editing video, but uh, okay, it was really cool. Well, good. I'm glad you liked it, and um, it was uh, fun to do that way. Got to have some fun doing this. Um, I'm going to guess watching the video. My answer is SWR loss is measured. Um, yes, the, the losses in the cable affect the reflected power, and it can do it over and over and over again. Um, uh, Tim uh, forwarded my video to some students, which was very kind of uh, Tim. He's a nice guy. Hell of a machinist, too. Um, uh, is it wrong that I consider resonance when X is... No, you're not wrong, which is often near, but not at where... That's right. So, sure, you're looking for where is R equals zero. It may be 50 ohms. It may be 40 ohms. It may be 150 ohms. Uh, and you're quite right. Uh, Mark writes, uh, thanks for the video, Jim, I'm aware, uh, like and coax recently purchased LMR 400, good stuff, uh, feed line and the 240 for jumpers, which is really good stuff. Just built like a battleship. When I move the radio room other end of the house, uh, we'll be closer to the antennas. Uh, is it better? Uh, he's, I think he's asking if you should shorten the cables. I... The loss on LMR 400 is really low, but if and it can be difficult to work with. So, um, I think I would look at maybe consider uh, coiling the coax maybe outside, forming a choke out of it. I don't know that I would trim LMR 400. It can be a very difficult coax to put uh, connectors on. I uh, never would have guessed that 100 feet of coax would uh, decrease the SWR. Yeah, well, it does. Yeah, it does make sense because it's lossy. Um, yes, the shield um, can be a counterpoise for the antenna in a way. You're right. Um, let's see what else have we got on here. Uh, this is from uh, Santino. Jim, you probably already know this, but just in case you don't, your skin looks white. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, all right, well, I don't want to go into that right now. Uh, anyway, uh, good question. So, um, I'll get the uh, camera going and, and uh, back to me. And let me slide my face on. And I can hear my receiver. I just worked um, uh, always six MBG at his house in uh, in Italy, uh, middle of the day at about um, a local time, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, and he would be uh, seven hours I think ahead of that, maybe eight, maybe eight where he is, and he was S nine um, uh, with a really simple antenna. But Mike knows how to install antennas and and make them work and make them work well. Uh, I hope this helps. Again, um, where the rubber meets the road kind of comment, uh, your antenna, feed line, coax switches, all that stuff is really important. What I wanted to show was standing waves and how the SWR can come down, how some antennas claim to cover a whole bunch of frequencies because, because of that. And they may have a low SWR, but they may not work worth a darn. And, um, 
if you if you put up an antenna uh, you want to put up the best feed line that you can afford to put up I'm a big believer in limiting your losses and it's one of the reasons I was able to work um, uh, Mike always 6 MBG at his house in Italy um, I, I've limited my losses in the feed line all right I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland California thanks for watching if you have a question post it below if you um, have a different opinion on something post that too we all we all can learn